In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to attack the three main sites on Consulate so you can become a master of the map. Once you know how to win your attacks on the top floor lobby and garage bomb sites, you'll be unstoppable and can win every single time you play Consulate. We're going to be going over the easiest ways to open the garage wall, plant the bomb on every site, and some of the best nade spots on the map. So let's get right into the video. We're going to start off with the garage wall, going over a few things. Um, you see a lot of mute, bandit, cade, just to deny the wall from being opened. Uh, and a big thing to help deal with this is the drone hole right here. So, how does this look? A lot of the time you might see a Jaeger, like, putting his ADSs on the wall here inside the garage. So, throwing a nade right in isn't usually the best play. One thing you can do is throw a drone outside the drone hole. And you can just jump it across to see if there's anybody actually actively watching the drone hole. And then if there isn't, you can drive it in and see if there's any ADSs or not. So, if there is ADSs, uh, usually... You have a thermite because thermite's the best for opening these two panels because you can just open them the biggest and put the most pressure on the site directly so if you have him you can pick flashbangs you can throw them in the drone hole to burn you can use the smoke grenades if you really want to burn as well um and then you can just take your grenade toss it in and that'll get any cade bandits or mutes there's only one situation where you won't be able to and that's if they have invincible cades so the invincible cades would be set up right in the floor here and then one either tucked under this box or in the floor here as well. Uh, there's a different few different spots for them over here. That's Those are the two most common ones. Um, sometimes the people, I think, even put it under this box. I'm not sure. But yeah, so if they're not the invincible caves, if they're not in those spots, they're just on the wall, mutes or bandits, whatever, you can nade it off through the drone hole and then open up the wall. Opening up the wall is absolutely huge because it will add so much pressure to the site. It requires the defenders to have to play at least two people on the site. And if there's not, you can just hit the site and fucking kill everyone and win the round that way. So... So if you do see those invincible cades that I was talking about, you can just head to the piano repel, and this is a super easy way to get them off. Probably the easiest way. So if you just shoot through the floor here, you can actually... Normally, the uh, the top layer isn't shot out of the way, but you see the edge of the stage, you just shoot through the floor, and you'll you'll be able to shoot the band off. if Or the cade off, sorry. Um, if you can't find the cade, you can always just toss a nade over there too, and that'll open up the floor and get the cade charge as well. Um, it fell through my hole there, but... You get the point. Another easy way to get the keg claw if it is in that spot is you can also drive your drone in through the drone hole. So if you bring your drone over, drive it through the drone hole, you can actually ping out the keg claw and then you can shoot it off off of the red ping because it will highlight it red and then it'll be super easy to shoot off as well. So let's move on to the basement roam clear, which is going to be pretty tough if you do it certain ways. So if you have a really coordinated team, you know, with a full stack and you have all your friends with you and you want to try this out, be my guess, a top floor admin clear is usually the best way to go. So if you send a couple people in through admin, maybe you get somebody up on the death balcony, you drone them through, you figure out if there's anyone up here. If there is, you can probably get a kill on them. Most people in rank play pretty aggressive. So that's, that's an easy way to get a free kill. And then once you have top control, you can work your way down into the middle floor. So once you have the middle floor, the only spots you can really be flanked from is the visa stairs if they go all the way up and come and open these hatches. These hatches are a very key component, which I'll talk about in a bit. But other than that, you can be flanked up spiral and you can be flanked up yellow. So what I like to do is have somebody watch a drone here just to watch for the yellow flank. So if you don't, if you decide you don't actually do a full top clear, this can also see the come down yellow stairs. So you have that one, which sees people pushing up and pushing down. You can also throw a drone in the grass here. And that will see the visa flank or the spiral flank, whichever way you put it. You could even put it in benches here, which is another pretty common one behind this lamp. So you can see if they actually cross the spiral stairs or come into visa. The only thing scary about this one is that you can have defenders sitting here watching for anyone rotating into circles. So you got to be kind of aware of that if you are setting those flank drones. But yeah, if you just have one of your teammates watch the flank drones, then a sledge, which I would really recommend running sledge on this map. He's absolutely great on pretty much all the sites. Um, but if you have sledge, then he can start opening the vertical holes to pressure the site. If you establish some solid control of this middle floor especially, then it's going to just change things completely. It's going to make it 10 times easier to attack this map. Um, a good combo is if you do have three teammates with you, you know, a lot of people out there solo queue, duo queue, um, but say you have a five stack or say you have a three queue, have somebody go Nomad. Nomad's really good on that sm this map. Nomad, Sledge, and Thermite would be your three picks there. So you have Thermite to open the garage wall, Sledge for the nades and for the vertical pressure, and then you have Nomad to set up these flanks. So you can Nomad the door here 
The only thing is if this hatch is again open, just be careful because defenders could drop out of there. You should be able to hear it as sledge though from here. Um, you could even, if you really want, you could shoot open the desk and put a nomad in here. And then when they drop, they're going to get air jabbed. But even just sitting in the hatch, they can see this area. So you have to be aware of that as well. Nomad there, nomad there. And then maybe just like on here, or you can tuck it behind this trash can. So when they come up, you know, they're looking this way. They get hit by the air jab. You got pianos free. Again, you have to be careful of them kind of creeping up the stairs there as well. Now it's time to actually start working the site. So as Sledge, you're going to want to open these main spots. Sledge, Buck, you know, whoever you are. Sledge is usually, again, the go-to who I recommend. So you want to open up right here, right? in front of the doorway so that's your angle onto pipes so anybody playing the pipes area or even close on this little bricks area you can now see this is why a lot of people put a shield here because then you can play behind the shield and the guy vertical can't get it again you can nade down onto the shield off this box but even some people put ads's to protect the shield as well so this is your first spot to open up pipes and clear anybody out of pipes if there is somebody playing between the cards, like, like let's say you didn't don't have that wall open yet and you know there's somebody between these cards, you just sledge between the piano and the desk and you can see between the two cars here. Side white is right in front of the piano windows, so the side white van where a lot of people hang out. And then you have your yellow pillar right on this double door. You can see anybody playing on the yellow pillar. And this is a really strong angle because you can see their legs and they can't really fight back against this, this one. Your boxes is gonna be right under the antechamber window. So this is where a lot of people sit. You know, you have to have the rotate. You can watch the rotate from here as well for anybody rotating in. And then lastly, you have the angle above the kitchen door. So anybody rotating out of the kitchen door, you can open up this way. You might be able to find some kills back here. You know, you can usually, once you have the whole floor open, you can kind of hear where they are, kind of feel it out. And then it helps uh, clear it a lot easier. Uh, let's say you do have like a Habana or a different hard breach besides Thermite or a hard breach charge even for that matter. You can open up the lobby hatch and a cool thing you can do with Sledge is you can actually open up this desk. So if you Sledge open the desk, you can get these angles into kitchen as well. And you can actually, when there is this rotate here, one sec, we'll get Neptune Nitrate. Right? Okay, so when they have this rotate, you can actually see down into security. So this is where the mirror would be set up. This is that middle wall reinforcement on security where people would set up a mirror or set up the reinforcement or sit on that wall there. So this is a really deadly angle that you can get to a sledge, which is sweet. So the main thing about sledging all these holes isn't really to kill them. It's about pressuring the site and opening it all up. So what you want to do before you even start peeking these holes as you're making them is you just want to go around and make all the holes first. That way the defenders aren't comfortable on site and you won't get nitroed as easily or killed as easily. So if you stay alive and make all the holes first, then you can start peeking them after because you've applied that pressure vertically. You have all the holes open. So if, even if you do die, your team can still come up and use the holes if they need them. So make all the holes first peek them all, what's next? Well, you might have to clear some utility. So let's say there's a maestro bubble here. You can nade it. If there's a maestro bubble here, you can nade it. So you wanna just use your grenades to clear out any utility that they may have on the site as well. On the other side of things, if you are in defense, you do wanna make sure you open these hatches, even if you're not gonna play up there because then the attackers at least have to worry about being flanked from these extra areas. Cause now instead of only having two spots you can be flanked from these two doors here, they now have to worry about four different flanks. So they they can come from this hatch, they can come from that hatch. They can rotate all the way up Visa stairs just to play this hatch. So there's a lot of extra things that the attackers have to watch if you do open up these hatches. So just open them up if you're on defense. So once you finally cleared all the utility site, you've pushed all the defenders off. What's next? Well, you wanna just go for a plant. So your thermite will be planting on the breach somewhere. And you can either come down yellow as sledge to hold the angle into kitchen for any pushes up. You could even hit the backside late, which is one of my personal favorites. Is just keep your sights up all the way down, walk down the back, and as they're planning, you can come in here and you can shoot the remaining defenders in the back. Uh, so you can kind of go for that collapse style push as well. You can also come down visa stairs if you want. I mean, this one's not really as favored. It's kind of a tough gunfight to take if they are watching, but. It is kind of nice because if they do try to push through the rotate hole, you're at least covering something for your team as well. So you can you can come down the back visa stairs and say, okay, I got the rotate. Like nobody can push through the rotate on you kind of thing. So as Thermite on the site, as the hard breach player, you know, you'll use your flashes or smokes to burn any ADSs for the nades. Once the stuff is all naded off the wall, you've got that part done. You're going to open up the wall. When you're ther thermiting this wall, I like to do the far right and the far left because what this allows you to do is have this small piece of reinforcement that you can actually use as cover when you're rotating between. So 
Let's update both panels, and then you can hold angles like this, so anybody swinging up here, you can kill. You can watch the yellow come down. It's usually really nice to have an extra player, like outside yellow, watching yellow. But if you you don't always have the luxury of that in ranked, you know. Uh, you can also peek side white. So this, this has, allows that extra dimension of cover. But at the same time, you can still get all the angles you normally would onto the pipes hallway, onto the kitchen door, you know, onto the back white van. But this just allows kind of that extra advantage for you as an attacker. Your main job after opening the wall is you want to find where the utility on site is for your sledge player or your players above or your players on the breach with you just to clear out any maestro cams, any sort of information that defenders might be able to get for you while you're planning. So the main objective would be find the stuff that's telling them where you're planning and get rid of it so it makes it way easier to plant for you. So you ping out the bubbles, you tell your sledge or Ash on the breach or Zofia or whatever it may be to clear those bubbles for you. And then as soon as that's done and the vertical pressure is applied, those defenders are gonna be killed or back off of the site, allowing you to get the plant down. So once you have someone covering yellow, you can pretty much just walk in and plant. There's not a lot stopping you. If you're up against some higher ranks, they might be playing a smoke here and throwing the smokes over, but it's pretty unlikely and not a lot of people will even be able to hit it most of the time. So you've cleared the utility, where do you plan? The most default spot is in front of this white van. It gives you the most cover, you're safe. The main thing is they can shoot you by going prone back here. So some defenders might drop off because this isn't covered by the breach, they can drop off and shoot your ankles. So this is something that you would want your vertical player to be watching. Either that, or you can actually plant on this black box. And this angle actually, when you're planting it, hides your head, which is really nice. So the only way they can kill you at this point is they actually have to push through the rotate hole, come up and shoot you in the head here. They can see a little fraction of it. But if they don't know you're there because you've cleared all the utility already, they're probably not even gonna notice you're planting here. So this is a very good plant spot if you can get to it. The last plant spot would be by the drone hole. Now, the thing is, with the mirrors up, they can see you planting here, obviously, and it's pretty easy to quick peek this door and kill anyone here, which is why if you can save the smokes, you'll want to, because you can. what you can do is you can smoke this smoke on a bomb and smoke here. So now nobody can see you when you're planting on the drone hole. And then you would just have a teammate on the breach covering for any pushes through. And then you probably want a person yellow because otherwise you might have this pipe player come up and swing yellow and kill you. So having someone on the breach probably watching this or or on yellow watching this and then having someone watch the push through the smoke. But this is a this is a very underrated plant spot. I know Sonics and Pro League planted here all the time when Consult was in Pro League. So this is a really good plant spot if you're a hard breacher. Very nice. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about the lobby site. Nomad is absolutely your favorite friend on the on this site. This and this in the top floor site, Nomad is just simply nasty. So let's talk about lobby first, though. Biggest, biggest, biggest concern here is the projector balcony jump out, which is why you always want to Nomad it. Sometimes people even throw Wamidas out here, so if you really want to check, you can. It'll catch your Nomad, which. In that case, I would just throw another Nomad on Death Valk. You definitely want to have it Nomaded off, especially if you don't have any of your teammates playing there, okay? So first things first, Nomad the Death Balcony. Please, 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 please just Nomad the Death Balcony. Thank you. Um, yeah, but on this site, window pressure is huge. Like, window pressure is a massive thing on the lobby site. So right away, maybe maybe Nomad first, not, not right away, but you'll want to open up these windows as soon as you can. A safe spot to do this from is this half wall here because like you can crouch down and open them it's it is a little sketchy so i would probably you know do it in this sort of fashion where you open these ones first and then you open this and then just be ready for people to stick their face in it like quick peek up check a lot of people will just stick their faces in those windows which can actually get you a lot of free kills um so if you're just careful about it that's a great way to go about this site is honestly because because you have that direct line of sight into sight it makes it really easy to just sit here and hold stuff this is a good angle for anyone coming through the rotate but again you're kind of exposed to the connector window so drones are also going to be your best friend you can throw drones in here if you see nobody's in piano you can actually get up on these repels and just hold the whole fucking cross you can hold the whole cross into the site look at this now nobody can walk in the piano that's crazy another quick thing is you will want to open up the front door as well this is a, again another easy spot you can post up on you can just sit out on this half wall and hold the the anti-chamber you might not get it you might not get the headshot off on this like especially if you're not a higher rank uh but even taking like a couple ticks of damage is definitely worth sitting there so you can do that as well 
Not only that, but you're also holding the run out at the same time because a lot of people try to run out the front door for the to kill the players on the windows. Playing on these windows adds so much pressure that the defenders will just come into you. And a lot of the time you can win the round just off kills from the defenders being over aggressive. So have a player post up here, have a player on the windows, and you're already off to a great start on lobby. So not only do you want Nomad the Death Balk jump out, but I'd also recommend Nomading the CEO jump out. Because what you can do on this site is jump out of CEO and fight the players on piano. So nomading this will just launch the people over here and get off their pals, just easy kill to clean up. And lastly, you'll probably want a nomad front door just in case this guy does die or go somewhere else. That way you're just safe from being run out on. So at this point, they jump at death belt, they're dead. They jump at, they run out front door, they're gonna get nomaded, they're dead. If they jump out CEO, you're gonna kill them. So really they can only jump out the windows you're on and the antechamber window. So at this point, you could probably even have your front door player just watch this window hop out or even get them up on the repel. You can have two, three players up on this repel and it's going to be really, really strong. So some teams, some players, they will make the vertical holes above these windows to hold it from CEO. If that's the case, you just need somebody up on the CEO windows while you repel in. And that way the defenders just can't watch the holes because the CEO window has a direct line of sight into everything above here. You got the guy on CEO, you got the other guy on the windows covering the plant. What's next? How do you actually get in and plant this bomb? Well, if you're nomad, you can use your flashbangs. You can flashbang this as you repel in. And the only place you're swinging from is this at this point, because these guys are gonna be blind. And then once you're in, you're covered by the bomb. This is probably the best plant spot, just right on the bomb, having someone on the circle door and having someone on the anti-repel make sure that nobody can come out of the bathroom door or peek you from circle so planting the bomb here is usually pretty free if you do have another player on the repel behind you you can try to plant here but the guys yellow are probably going to be a problem so usually it's either on the bomb or behind the piano here which this one also works but it's a little it's a little sketchy it can be a little sketchy this is better if you have like the yellow control but Usually it's just tuck on the bomb and plant right here. Getting piano plants are super free, especially if you've already got a couple kills from just aggressive defenders. So yeah, bait on the windows for a bit, bait outside. You got lots of time because the site is directly connected to the outside. You don't have to clear any other rooms for first, which is really nice. So yeah, you can bait a lot. You can get those free kills, like clean up where you can and then go for the site after, after that fact, right? So you can use the flashes to repel, and you can also use smokes if you do have the hard breach of the, the, the thermite smokes. You can smoke off your ante and smoke off your door here. And at that point, it's it's you can plant anywhere you want. The only thing you have to worry about is the hash drop. So I would probably, if I have this smoked off and I have this smoked off, I can just plant here. I can plant between the windows. The guy in your window is just making sure they don't run through the smokes to kill you or drop the hatch. So they should be aiming at here, and then if they see someone come through the smoke, they can just simply just just shoot them i mean the guy in the smoke has a huge disadvantage so yeah just one guy on repel that's all it takes to cover that in rank not not a lot of teams even set up the site very effectively so it's going to be pretty pretty easy just use the smokes to cut line of sight or the flashbangs to repel in flashbangs are also super loud so they'll cover the sound of the repel which is nice um and yeah just take piano plant the bomb post plant's super easy you just get up on this repel if you've planted there all you have to do is upside down repel Make sure they don't jump out on you and when you hear them defuse you repel down and just pre-fire it so yeah pretty free pretty free guys stop banning consulate so one other lobby take you can do is the yellow take just a quick yellow kind of rush style type of thing so if you get a drone in garage and see there's nobody playing it you can just come up yellow you don't even have to drone this out because there's only a couple angles and if you sneak into the spot, you can catch a lot of people rotating through piano to antechamber, especially if they're trying to get aggressive on these windows. It's just a super easy shot in the back. The thing is, you don't see a lot of people playing here. You don't see a lot of people playing this benches area on a lobby defense. It's usually top floor, bathroom, lobby, basement, visa, those kind of areas. But the benches players are pretty easy to cut off. So you don't see a lot of people playing here, which is why just coming up yellow quick, getting this kill and getting out is super huge. If you do get to the point where you get the kill and get out, watch for the yellow flank. These guys these guys are calling that you're inventing. They're, they're gonna come up yellow and try to pinch you. You might get even another freebie and then put your team in a, in a 5v3 right off the start, which it, it's as easy as it gets. It's so easy. This map is so easy, guys. Stop banning it. Stop banning the map. Stop banning the map, guys. Stop banning the map. There is a chance that there, you run into a Malusi here, like a Malusi web. A lot of people put the Malusi right on this spot. If you do, honestly, you can just knife it. Again, not a lot of people in this area. It might bait them into swinging you. And, and this is a pretty attacker-sided 
fight to take. So I would I would take this fight all day of the week and just take your damage, get out, take your kill, get out, whichever one it is, and yeah, work with it. Moving on to the final site that people play in rank, nobody goes archives and tellers, and if they do, they're probably comp players, but if they go archives, I'll just fucking rush. I don't know. Um, so moving on to the CEO site, which is actually one of the more popular sites in ranked, which is surprising because it's, in my opinion, the worst in the whole map. Like, I prefer archives tellers, but CEO is the rank site to go to, so everybody goes here. This is how you attack CEO. It should be a win every single time if you do a CEO attack. Just, just trust. Just do a CEO attack. Don't do the admin attack. Don't get baited into the admin push. Clearing people in admin is so hard. Just go for a CEO attack. Trust me, it'll work. Nomad here is huge. I don't know how many times I say this. Nomad is so good on this map. She's good on every single site. Nomad, if she's not banned, which she is banned a lot on this map specifically, but if she's not, run Nomad. I promise you it's worth it. So you want to Nomad your front door and your death balk jump out. You want to Nomad your yellow door run out because you're going to want people on the CEO windows and the anti windows. So run, nomading the yellow door run out is also big. I like to Nomad above the doorway because as a defender, it's a lot harder to shoot the nomads above the door than it is on the side. The sides, you can just kind of shoot them off, right? But the ones above, you kind of have to back out and look up to do it, which is, is a little more annoying. Uh, this is honestly a horrible nomad. I would put it up just farther, just so like it's not sticking out as much. This one's pretty easy to shoot. I'm sorry, that was a terrible example. I'm embarrassed, but you get the point. So, but because the, the range on them is massive, dude. You can, you can throw that thing up, so just do that. So what do I like to do? As a champion Rainbow Six player, which is what I am, by the way, also a professional, if you didn't know, is I like to work this connector window. I go up, I punch this, I stick my face in it, boom, free kill on the bathroom guy. You're already up in a 5v4. A lot of time people stand this doorway. It's such an easy kill, such an easy kill. So punching this barricade and just peeking it right away is a good move. I like to open it up, maybe throw a flashbang if you need to. A lot of time people will be in here, so I like to just throw the flashbang in before I throw the drone just so they aren't looking at the window frame as I throw the drone in or they don't hear me throw it in. So if you see that there's nobody connector, what does this mean? If there is nobody connector and you have your bomb on the CEO window, so say you have a teammate on the CEO window with a bomb, this is this is just free. If there's nobody CEO and they're here with a bomb, you can just repel in and plant. Plant here or on the reinforcement, those are the two best spots. But if the connector is clear, if this room in front of you is clear with the rotate hole and stuff, this guy repelling in only has to worry about this double door. So he can either smoke, flash it, whatever, and repel in and plant. Okay. Now let's take this other hypothetical situation, which is also very common, that there's a guy in CEO. You can kill this guy from connector window. You just shoot him through the wall. You just shoot him through the wall, guys. That is one of the easiest kills to get, especially if, because he can't run. So if you have your guy on CEO window holding this guy, if he tries to run, your CEO guy kills him. If he doesn't try to run, this guy kills him. So in reality, this is a super easy kill to get. This is also why you wanna make the rotate on the other side of the wall if you're on defense so that people don't have this angle right away and you can actually have a CEO player if you want. So that's a really easy way to clear the guy out CEO. If he is in the closet, he's pretty much useless. You can just kill him from the skylight. You can nade him from the skylight. You can nade him from underneath. You can you can just hold him from here, but there's not a lot of spots to sit in that closet either. It's, it's pretty easy to clear out. So it's, it's just a bad spot to play in my opinion. So let's say you have CEO cleared out you're on this window, you have your bomb on CEO, what's next? Hopefully the rest of your team can take yellow. If you have three guys yellow in these two repel spots, you're pretty much set. The only weakness really is the jump outs on piano window and anti, which is, if you wanna kill this guy, just jump out those windows. Um, unless he like, you can nomad, you can nomad that too, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so if your team has yellow control, you have these two repels, You've won the round. Your, your Nomad holds the entire cross. This guy in the window can hold the entire cross. If you if you do have your yellow players watching long desk, you can upside down repel here and see toes. You just have a major advantage. You just, you just pre-fire it. Just pre-fire it. You just pre-fire it. Free kill. Free kill. Just upside down repel. It's so easy. This game is so easy, guys. Thermite. CEO site. What's the plan? You're going CEO window. You are the CEO window bitch, okay? Sorry, I didn't mean to call it. I didn't, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. But you are playing on CEO. So, let's let's go to the same hypothetical situation where your team has yellow control. You know what? Fuck it. Your team doesn't have yellow control. What are the defenders going to do? They might have an angle in this wall. They might have an angle in this wall watching CEO, and they'll be bathroom maybe or long desk. So if you have your team on the connector repel, it means you can smoke, 
this, you can smoke this, and repel in the building. Look at that. Oh, their yellow your, their yellow holes are all of a sudden useless. You can plant behind this desk. This is the default go-to plant spot. Uh, but an even better one is usually up on this reinforcement, especially if your team has yellow control. So if your team has yellow control, this reinforcement is probably the best spot to plant. So if you have yellow but not con control, you plant on the desk. If you have con control and yellow, you can plant on the reinforcement. If you have con control but not yellow control, you plant on the desk. You, un you understand? It's just, you just kind of, you, you work your way around. Uh, if you didn't understand that, just listen to it over and over again until you understand it. Um, let's say, let's say you do have yellow control as you're repelling in and you don't have con control. You can smoke the double door and you can smoke con and then the same thing applies. You understand? Yeah, great. Uh, having a second person up on this window with you, if that's the case, like let's say you have yellow control, having a second person up to watch the run through the smoke is huge. Uh, but of course you can hear the defenders coming through the smoke, which you can just get off the plant and kill them. Uh, the smokes are mainly just there for while you're repelling in. Uh, you don't need them while you're planning because the desk will cover you. So if you do have that guy on the closet window and say they reinforce the connector wall, that left connector wall that we use to kill this guy in that area, you can actually nade this guy through the floor. If you cook your nade just right, throw it, it's a free kill. Super easy. You don't even have to enter the building. Super safe. Um, but yeah, practice that nade. Just go into a terrace hunt or a custom game. You can change your map just to consulate in terrace hunt settings. Or if you know how to set up a custom lobby, you can do that. Uh, you can practice that nade over and over it's really not that difficult so that's a that's an easy one to get another really common spot that defenders play is in bathroom uh behind the sink so they'll watch through the yellow rotate hole for your team coming up yellow from behind this little sink in the bathroom which is on the other side of that wall uh so again another super easy nade you just go prone as i benches i back up a bit free kill again you just Top just nades eliminated. nades are so good you could be so good with nades uh super easy i literally recorded both those on my first try i am pretty talented so it is tough to be this talented um but not really it's it, this game's so easy guys you just you just you just gotta think about stuff like practice your nades and and think about what makes sense and and you'll be good throwing these nades through the floor too is a lot stronger because you can't do anything to counter it as a defender. The ADSs won't work through the floor. I mean, you could put the ADSs a floor below or on my disc, but they would have to see it coming in order to do that. So just practicing these nades through the floor is something that's gonna just instantly make you a better player and help you out so much on other maps besides just consulate. The last nade would be the connector player. So rather than throwing in your grenade through this window, which he has time to run away, he has time to react, there could be an ADS, one my disc, et cetera. You can actually nade through the anti-window underneath. So this pillar is is the wall. The line the walls are lined up with the pillars. So that would mean this is the connector area right there where the player would be playing. So you cook your grenade, you throw it up. Oh that oh that was sorry, that was horrible. I don't know why why I threw it like that. You cook your grenade, you throw it up, you kill him. There you go. Much more beautiful. That was the first nade I messed up all day, okay? Like cut me some slack, guys. I threw two perfect nades and I and I flubbed one, but you have two grenades for a reason. One flub and one dub, okay? That's what I say. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you learned something about consulate attacks. That was pretty much all I ever do on consulate is just play windows on every site and then open up the garage wall. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I hope you like the map review. Um, if you guys have any map suggestions for me uh, that you want to know how to attack or defend or specific sites, things like that, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Have a fantastic day. Rock on. Bye-bye.